I was golfing with a friend today and he's a business owner. He used to play professional baseball, just a real all around interesting cat. And as I was talking to him, the fact that I golfed with him during the week and he had just gotten home from uh, a trip to Spain with his wife. I mean, the guy's living the good life. And I told him that, you know, you're kind of semi-retired. And he looked at me, and I don't know how many of you have ever watched that TV show, The Wire, but there's the uh, the mayor, and he would always say, she. And so he gave me that look uh, today. And, and so, you know, we got into this long conversation, and, and I started to think about kind of what, what it all means is when it comes down to it. So I want, I want to talk today really about the fact that, you know, retirement, I got way more free time than I, than I bargained for. And, you know, the way that I, 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 what I realized was that even though he can travel, he can do all the things he wants to do, he was still, uh, he's still under a tremendous amount of stress, has to meet the P&L for his business. Uh, he has a bunch of different ventures that he's involved in. And so those things all take time uh, because as a business owner, the idea is, is you want to accumulate your wealth so that way you can sell things off and have assets to be able to retire. They don't have 401ks and 403bs in general, like the rest of us uh, do. But, you know, as we as we got into the conversation, I started thinking back to uh, some of the shows that I watch. So those of you that don't know, uh, which is probably all of you out here in the, in the World Wide Web, is I like watching prison shows. Just because uh, in the world there's there's these different total institutions that we have no line of sight to, and this gives us an opportunity to understand how things happen. And, and there's one thing that I notice in, in all the prison shows I watch is that prisoners get things done. They go to school, they um, get their educations, they get degrees, they get jobs, they get skills, and they get all of these types of things. And so it it leads me to the question. Uh, if, if you're in prison and you can do all of these things, how come you can't do it in the free world? And the reason they can't do it in the free world is because on top of just when you're in prison, you're just going to school or you're just working or you're just learning that skill or you're just doing your thing. But when you, uh, when you get out in the rest of the world, you got to pay your rent, you got to pay your light bill, you got to pay your car note, you got to go to a job, you have all these other things you have to do. Um, and so the, the idea is that when you have a bunch of other things to do, then the stuff you want to do or that you need to do becomes more difficult. And that's really no different than the working person. Um, when you're, when you're working, you know, work is really an anchor. And so you have this anchor that takes 40, 50 hours a week. And so you know what you're going to be doing 40 hours a week, 50 hours a week. And so everything else that you enjoy doing now, now think about this for a second, everything else that you enjoy doing in your life, is centered around the fact that you have to go to work on Monday. I don't know about you, but to me, that sucks. Because, yeah, we like our jobs. We tell ourselves that. But the reality is, is when we say we're going to win the lottery, we don't say we're going to go and work. We say we're going to go do all these other things. But the only way we do all those other things is around work. <laughs> Excuse me. And so when you when you look at work as an anchor and that anchor is gone, now you have all this other free time. Now you have everything is all the extracurricular activities are the only thing that really structures your time. And so as opposed to looking at fitting in, um, going to play golf, fitting in to go take a art class, fitting in a piano lesson, fitting in times to go to movies with your friends, that's all you really have to do. And then once you, you do that, you don't have anything else to do. And it's it's a total different, it's almost like this dystopian universe that you're in because you're dealing with a life that's different, that's that's not bound together by anything. And that's a lot of free time. We think because when we're working, our minds are caught into what we're doing, we're focused on what we're doing, our time is going, and you know, we all have the, had those days at work where it seems like, oh yeah, today's going by fast because I'm super busy. But that's a lot of time. And but when you when you take away that anchor, all of the rest of the of the um, time that you have is is now 
those are the anchors for your time. And so that is great, but I'll tell you, for me, that's what creates a little bit of stress because, look, my wife will tell you, I slid right into retirement. I enjoy, I have a lot of interests. I have a lot of things that I like to do. I got a lot of things that I want to continue to try. But from time to time, every day I wake up and I ask myself, what am I going to do today? Sounds like a great question to have when you have stuff to do, but when you don't have anything to do, then you try to figure out, well, I can only watch so much TV. I can only plant so many tomatoes. I can only pet the cat so many times. I can only take so many piano lessons. And so what I'd like to talk a little bit about today is how do you deal with that stress, or at least how I deal with that stress? Um, because it's it's stressful, but it's not stressful. You know, how, they, how the kids say, kidding, not kidding. It's stressful, but it's not stressful. Uh, so the first thing I did uh, is I took a personal inventory of everything that I like to do, everything that I'm interested in. It's no, it's, it's no surprise I, for anybody that's watched this channel. I enjoy playing golf. In fact, I still got my hat on. I got my, my ball marker on my hat. I, I was just so excited. I didn't want to change clothes. And, and plus, my wife tells me that I need to wear different shirts when I'm doing the YouTube videos because I tend to wear my red Coca-Cola t-shirt all the time. So, um, But I had to take a personal inventory of all the things that I like to do. And, and all my interests and, and really write those things down. I'm a big fan of lists. Write down those things that it is that you like to do. Uh, because then when you say, well, what is it I'm going to do today? Even if you don't feel like doing a particular thing or if it doesn't come to mind, you have a reference point to go back and say, I'm going to do this. And it could be things as little as, as calling your kids. Uh, sometimes like today, um, or I'm sorry, over the weekend, I took some collard greens out of the garden. I picked some collard greens out of the garden, some carrots and some chives and a, and a couple of other things, packed those up, took them over to my mom because it gave my mom some fresh uh, some fresh vegetables. Uh, she doesn't have a garden because where she lives, you just can't. There, there's a host of wildlife that eats all the eats all the stuff. So and any of you that live out in the woods, or you know how that works. But I, I took some greens to my mom. Uh, so... You know, but again, I find these things that I that I enjoy doing, and and I had to in order to take that inventory, I had to ask myself, you know, a few things. Uh, you know, what is it that you enjoy doing? Uh, F F F F. You know, people. I you know, I got in this conversation a couple weeks ago with somebody, where they said, "Well, I wish I could just win the lottery," and I said, "Well, okay, that's great, but if you won the lottery, what would you do?" And this person said, "Well, I'd get another job." that's less stressful. So I said, wait a minute. So if you win $500 million, you're going to go get another job. That doesn't even make sense. And he says, well, I don't know exactly what it is that I'm going to do. And so that's why it becomes so important to take that inventory because you're in a situation where you could do those things now. And so what are those things now that you could do? What do you enjoy doing? And it doesn't have to be things that you've even tried. It could be different. Some people say, I want to go to Greece. I want to travel. I want to do all of these different things that I don't have time to do. Well, you could do them when you're retired, but you have to know that that's what you want to do. Otherwise, you get there and then you get stuck because it's like, oh my God, I'm so excited. And then you forget everything. At least that's what happens to me. So I, I wrote down, what is it that I enjoy doing? And I, I took the basics like golf and stuff like that. But I also took, and excuse my sniffles, but I've got allergies from being out playing golf. Why do I play golf when I have allergies? I'll let my wife answer that one. She probably has a very direct answer, but we won't go there in this video. Uh, the other thing is, is I had to ask myself, you know, what makes you tick? For a long time in my life, I did uh, leadership development. So I would travel 40 weeks a year uh, and do three-day seminars on leadership development. And it was, what I loved about it is that it helped people uh, change their lives. I thought I was just helping people become better leaders, but I was getting Facebook messages and I was getting emails and I had people stop me and say, you know, you, you changed my life. I have more confidence. And, and I just really got a charge out of that. That's, that's really one of the impetus. That was the impetus for the YouTube channel because I just, I enjoy that. You know, for those of you that don't know, my personal mission statement is to uplift the human condition in any way that I can. And, 
I have the ability to speak to people. And so that's what I do. And I, I enjoy that. I enjoy getting into great conversations with intelligent people about topics that sometimes I agree with them on. Sometimes I don't. But those are things that I just know that I enjoy to do. And so I do those things, whether I'm getting paid for it or not. And I think the key is, is find those things that make you tick, that, that you'll do whether you're getting paid for them or not. Because the fact of the matter is, is even if you love your job, ask yourself, what is it about this job that I love and what is it that I get to do? Some people say, well, I don't like, I have to do A, B, and C, but I like D, E, and F. And so maybe D, E, and F are the things that you say, if I could be more efficient, I could focus um, my time and do those things. I ask myself, what brings me energy and joy? Uh, you know, one of the one of the big misnomers about me is that I just enjoy being around big groups of people and I can function in big groups of people. I've had the opportunity and the responsibility of being around large groups and being part of and leading large groups of people. But I really enjoy small groups of people where you can have intimate conversations, talk about real topics and dig into real things and, and really think about you know, being the catalyst for some type of real change with whatever that change is. Uh, but that brings me joy. I, I, I find joy in just relaxing. Uh, last night, some of you may have watched a short. I was sitting in the room and I was just thinking and I had some John Coltrane in the background. I could do that all day, every day. And, you know, I have the opportunity to now, but I, I think there's probably more to life than uh, sitting and listening to John Coltrane. But again, it's it's when you, as we start taking that personal inventory, those are all of the things that I look at. One of the things I'm excited about today is being able to come and give this information or, or have this conversation on the on the channel. Um, I, I really enjoy this, and 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 so I look forward to putting together videos. I and it's funny because I, I went from putting videos out every day to two days a week. I told my wife, she says, why are you only doing two days a week? I said, well, because I might run out of content. And then she says, you'll never run out of content. And I said, I know, but just in case, I don't want to run out of content. Now, if you would like to see more than more than uh, more videos than just twice a week, please let me know. Uh, and if, if you put that in the comments, then I, I will I will do more than, than two a week. But I. But it's, again, it brings me energy. It brings me joy. I like to do it. I don't get paid from YouTube. I'm not selling anybody anything. And I don't have any Dr. X's magic elixir. But it's it's something that brings me joy. And things that bring me joy, it's I'm spending time. I don't feel like I'm spending a lot of time. But it's I'm spending time doing something that I love to do. It's It's part of my inventory. And then you know, again, going back to what I was saying earlier about the, the guy that said, you know, if I won the lottery, um, you know, I, I hope I win the lottery. And I say, well, what is it that you're going to do? Because I have another video and I, I think I named it something like being retired is like winning the lottery. The fact is, is the most valuable asset that we have is time. And, and, and just put it in perspective. Your time is so valuable that somebody is paying you for no other reason except that you have a, your time is so valued with a particular skill that they're giving you money for it. And the sad part is, is most of us have no idea how valuable the time is. Most of us think about uh, the thing. Most of us think about the money that we're getting. And most of us operate as if we're lucky to get the money that we're getting from this individual. But the reality is this individual is more is lucky for us giving them our time. And so your time, and I can't emphasize this enough, and I'm going to continue to emphasize it, is that your time is the most valuable asset. And, you know, a lot of people ask me when they look at my life in totality, why do you do the stuff that you do? And I said, because when I'm 90 years old and I'm looking back in my life, I want to have a good story to tell. I want to be able to talk about the people I impact and I want to talk about the lessons I learned because we all, 
I know myself, every interaction with every human being hasn't always been positive. And there's some interactions that I'd like to change and there's mistakes that I've made and there's things that I've learned and there's people that I've met and there's friends that I've made. And, you know, just like, it's, it's the same story that we all have. But my, my point is, is you, it's, 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 you want to have the time to, to be able to do those things. So on that note, I'm, I'm going to stop here because I, I think if you, I, part of my stress with retirement is the fact that I have more time than I bargained for, you know, and it's easy to intellectualize the idea that we got all this time and we'll be able to fill it out. But most of us don't, we underestimate the, the burden that work puts on our time. And the fact is, is your most valuable asset is given back to you. So then you've now won the lottery and your time is your own. And so now it's up to you to own that time. So on that note, I'm going to cut this one off. Have a great rest of your day. And I hope to talk to you soon.